Hey guys, welcome to something a little bit different than what I, what I, what you're used to uh, seeing on my channel. Uh, we're still in the main theme of medieval stuff, of uh, at least by the looks of it. Uh, but this is not medieval too. Nope, it's a quite fun game I discovered uh, some three, four months ago. It's called Mountain Blade. This is the Mountain Blade Warband game. I think it's, uh, I don't know if Warband is an expansion pack or if you can count it as, uh, as a separate game, I'm not sure. Anyway, the game is really, really, really fun. As you can see, you're taking a different kind of a perspective uh, uh, in comparison to the one you're taking in uh, Medieval 2. Now you're a f you, you, you lead your character first, first uh, person. It's a hack and slash thingy, and basically I love it. I really, really do love it. It's uh, ooh, it's uh, in a fantasy world, so it's not in a real world. It's not medieval Europe or something. It's fact the factions are the factions are totally uh, invented, but they are based on medieval European factions. And the thing is, you create your story in this uh, invented uh, fantasy realm. Uh, you start off uh, as a poor guy wandering and looking for adventure in the world, blah blah blah, and then you have your standard, uh, well, uh, uh, role playing like elements, but it's quite simple. It's not even fancy, but it's, as I said, it's fun. It's incredibly, incredibly fun. You build your story, there's a little bit of diplomacy. In this, there's a, a, a lot of action, there's some economic let's see, elements in this, and there's, as I said, lots of fun. I've built my character, uh, I'm building my character for a long, long time now. As you can see, he's pretty badass. So, he just slashes, chops everything to bits, to bits, to bits. To bits. <clears throat> um, He's got some nice equipment. I have a Berdice, a great Berdice axe. Remember the Russian Berdice axe? Um, then I have a nice great sword on him, and I have his lance. He also has his horse, his heavy charger horse. But uh, in this battle, it does it is not included since I'm um, well. This was a ambush uh, that I set up for these uh, for these bandits. So basically, you start uh, the game of, as I said, adventuring along in the kingdom, and if you play your cards well, first you're a vassal of a king, you, you fight for that king, then you get some estates, um, you grow in power, you grow in, uh, in fame as you win battles, and at one point you are safe to proclaim your independence from the from the king whose vassal you are, and start your own kingdom, which I did, so it's the kingdom of Macedon. Uh, and this is this is actually me. Let let's just take a look at this guy. This pure badass. Look at him. with the axe, just just badass. Just owning this medieval landscape. Uh, he looks even more badass than his horse. And uh, so, so you you after you you proclaim your independence, you're free to do as you wish with your kingdom. You can appoint ministers. You have uh, other faction nobility joining you for your causes. Uh, declaring war on other factions, um, besieging castles, well, the whole stuff, the whole works. It's, as I said, it's really fun, I don't take it that seriously, to be honest. Um, but, it, as I said, the fun element is really into it. Um, so, the factions in this game are, first, this uh, the orange one is the Kingdom of Swedia. These guys are based on well medieval France and Germany mostly, so they have the the heavy knights. The the green ones are the kingdom of uh, uh, what was the name? Rhodes, I think. Something Rodox, Rodox. Sorry, those are based on the Italian faction. They have good spears, good uh, the best infantry spearmen and the best uh, crossbowmen, I think. Uh, here we have the I'm <coughs> sorry. Here we have the faction of uh, of uh, the Sarnid Sultanate, guess who they are based on, ha ha ha. The pink ones that I almost exterminated are the Mongoloid faction, they have uh, their horse archers, this is the Kyrgyz Khanate. 
Then you have the white ones for the faction, uh, together with me, the most powerful faction in this game. Those are the Kingdom of Vagris, uh, based on medieval Russia. So they are a mix of all things, not the best in anything, but they have a good mix. And the Kingdom of Norse is based, of course, on the Nordic kingdoms of uh, the Viking kingdoms of uh, medieval Europe. They have great uh, infantry building, they have uh, no horsemen. The big uh, blob, red blob in the middle, that's me, that's the Kingdom of Macedon, currently ruling these uh, four cities, right, it's four, still got the Rim, Veluka and uh, Nara, two of these were previously held by the Mongols, uh, this was held by Swedia and this was held by Rodox, and I basically started the game by being a vassal of the Kingdom of, uh, uh, by the Kingdom of Sphidia, after I after that I declared independence. So where was I? Here is uh, oh, where is me? God damn it! I think I can't find myself. I'm pretty mad. I should be somewhere over here or not here. Yeah. So um, I'm direct ruler of Nara and the Luca, where my capital is, and all the ministers. As actually just one minister. And the rest of the estates, villages, castles, and uh, cities, I have distributed among my among the nobility that has joined my faction. Uh, as you can see, you had pop-up messages uh, around here. I saw that this guy so so this guy uh, uh, deflected from his kingdom, so he's free. Maybe I'll check out check him out at my at my capital. Maybe he wants to join me. Uh, my party is composed, as you can see, from Swedian knights, Swedian men of arms that are going to be upgraded to knights. This is the best cap in the game, just pure uh, knight, knightly stuff, you know, charging the fuck out of everyone. Then I have some mercs that I just took along the way. I'm gonna go with swordsmen with them. I have the Swedian militia, so once you recruit guys from the villages, so you can just recruit them from from villages. They are uh, regular. They're they're, they're well non-armed militias, and uh, you can upgrade them along the way. And you can uh, recruit different types of units from each village because uh, the villages that are in, that are uh, normally belonging to, let's say, Swedia will give you a chance to upgrade them into knights and Swedian infantry. Well, the villagers from over here are going to give you the chance to upgrade uh, uh, those recruits into Rodox uh, type of units and so on and so on, so you get the point. Uh, once you conquer villages that are and cities, regions that are inherent to other factions, uh, then you get the chance to recruit, uh, to recruit guys that you can use as, uh, to upgrade uh, in uh, that faction's uh, um, inherent units, and as you can see now, I'm going to my city and going to see if those guys need anything. Again, this is me in a in a uh, Mongol city settings. As I said, th that city was inherent to the Mongols, so you cannot build your own unit uh, roster. Let's say you have to move around and recruit people from different uh, recruit people from different villages uh, that were inherited to to other factions. Uh, the, the original faction owners, and that is how you get uh, uh, mixed up, uh, how you can uh, mix things up. Uh, no. What kind of a job is here for me? Uh, I'm going to send a caravan of goods to Krip. Ah, that's so far away. No, I can't do, can't be bothered with that right now. Actually, I, I, slowly but surely, I learned for where all the Cities are all, not all, but most of the cities are in this game. You see, you have your standard merchants, you can buy stuff, but I'm already nicely uh, equipped. And I have also my uh, my party around here. Yep, these guys are your hero guys. They all have different, uh, they're all different characters, and some of them don't stand each other the other ones, others like each other, so you gotta, there are lots of, and lots of more of these characters in the game, so you can take your picks, and you gotta be careful to uh, not to uh, pick two guys that can't stand each other, because that's going to affect the party morale, 
Um, and you get your inventory over here. I'm gonna sell some stuff now, and you get also your reports about the weekly budget, party size, morale. Well, it's all simple. Let's see, it's really nicely, nicely done. Not a lot of thinking into it, as I said. Oh, not the streets. Sorry, my bad. Um, not a lot of thinking, uh, but a lot of uh, fun, a lot of hacking, slashing, and, and stuff. I'm going to sell stuff like this guy because I need these things. I need the salt, I need the rusty swords and stuff. You can of course equip your companions, your the characters that you hire along the way. And let's see, can I enter the arena? Yep. And I'm gonna show you some hand-to-hand -hand action. As you can see, you can practice in the arena. This is what I did before, uh, or this is what I did to get my character in some shape and to just to practice a little bit. And the, for the starters, there are enough money to be earned like this, but later in the game, for example, the point at which I am, not really, I'm just showing you how it goes. As you can see, you increase proficiency with one-handed weapons with two hand. Oh, with two hand. Ah, that guy just killed me. Uh, with one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons with horse uh, riding, etc., etc. So it's as I said, it's a really fun game. I can just, I can only recommend it uh, if if you like to try. It's got also a multiplayer element. It's also fun, but I'm not. Uh, I'm too shy to try right now. I think I totally suck in this game, and I think I'll be bringing you a couple of more videos of this. Uh, but later on, and just from the battles, not uh, going too much into the uh, other elements of the game. So, guys, hope you enjoyed. Bye bye.